more problems, man. We're gonna try to do like 50 problems. Your grades ain't one. This time we're doing number nine. Number nine from, <clears throat> you know, chemical process analysis. So this time we got strawberries and like there's some sugar and some water and we're trying to make jam. So that's pretty cool. It's another pretty cool problem. And this means that <clears throat> when I was going back to my PDF, I, um, I marked it because this is a homework problem. So this is going to be pretty useful because it's a homework problem. Okay, so just, you know, I'm going to do the mass balance. So try yourself, guys and gals. You know the drill. Please pause the video, please. That's the only way to really learn. Otherwise, you're not going to grasp it, okay? If I see some comments and you're like, oh, you didn't explain this. Because I want you to try it, okay? All right. George. Both Burgess. All right. <clears throat> Towards the end, this is just a reminder for me, towards the end, I have an important tip that really, really got to me that, like, <clears throat> back in the day when I was taking this class, I was, like, really struggling with these, like, little tiny calculation details. So I have a little tip for you. Small tip. Small tip. I hope it helps, but it's towards the end. Okay, so the first thing that really got to me, you, you have to assume that 100% of the solids is sugar. If you don't assume this, you can assume any other percent because that's that's what the first thing that really confused me. This one said solids and this one said sugar. So does it mean that there's a solid balance and a sugar balance? Well, technically, yes. Technically, yes, because not 100% of the mass of the solids in a strawberry is sugar. But we can assume it to be 100 or even whatever percent you want. That just eliminates one of the, the uh, degrees of freedom, okay? So you just have to assume some percentage of the solid has to be some sugar. And I looked it up and technically it should really be more like 70% because there's not only is there carbohydrates, there's nucleic acids, the, the, the DNA of the strawberry, there's the, um, there's the lipids, you know, but anyway, so that's more vital. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is don't get tripped up on like, okay, solids, sugar, water. Okay, is this one a mass balance on the sugar, the solids? Oh man, that really got to me. That I really struggle with these kinds of like logic things. But it's it's not just about like getting tripped about the sugar and the solids. It's just make an assumption and move on. Because at the end of the day, these are actually really calculations that are actually mostly estimates. Because you can't really extract 100% perfect. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Try to translate this into your own diagram. So what we have first is, well, we have some stuff coming in and some stuff coming out. Namely, oh, this is uh, this is the try to this is the message I was trying to convey to myself. But you know, before looking at the solutions, before looking at this problem, I just just want to give myself another message. I, I made another video about this. Just please try yourself because it's just like solving a Rubik's cube or playing chess. It's like you got to use your creativity, man. Don't be lazy. Don't just assume that you don't understand it. Try yourself. And when you get stuck, try to think about it logically, all right? So first thing is, you got strawberries coming in. Strawberry feels rubber. And sugar coming in, right? They're mixed. This is a mixer. 45 to 55 mass ratio. It's heated to evaporate the water. So this is going to be water vapor and strawberry jam. So the sugar, this is clearly 100% sugar. But the strawberries, like I said, we're going to assume it to be 15% of the sugar. Because it's 15% by solid. And that means it's approximately 85% water. Okay? Which is pretty crazy if you think about it. But um, <clears throat> we're just going to kind of go with that. These are numbers. These are. There's no way this is going to be 100% accurate. That's the difference between engineering and science. Science is 100% accurate because it's theoretical. Engineering is now putting it to the test. And the water vapor is going to be what? 100% water. Strawberry jam is going to be a third water by mass, so therefore it's two-thirds by mass sugar, okay? So this is our whole process. For me, this is the hardest part. For me, this was the hardest part. I really encourage you to <clears throat> think about this by yourself and focus on this because once you have this, the rest of this is just algebra, right? I think you might be getting the hang of the mass balance by now, but the, the hardest part for me was definitely drawing the process diagram, honestly. That's what really got to me. Because if you can't start with this, you're stuck for the rest of the problem. Anyway, uh, another little small tip is just to convert the, the 
the variables and the units. So I'm just going to use like M. I'm going to write the whole word. But, you know, you can write your own thing. Maybe you want to write like STR for strawberry and like SG for sugar, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. But we can write our overall mass balance. I think you guys hopefully get the hang of it, guys and gals. Summation n equals summation now, right? And now we can uh, put these all together. Okay. And I'm going to show you the, the long way. Okay. Because slow and steady wins the mass balance, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so, namely, overall mass balance, strawberries, sugar, vapor, and jam. Okay. This is the OMB, not the OMG. Credit to my professor for thinking that joke. So, you just sum them up. All right. Strawberries plus sugar equals vapor plus jam. This is all in pounds. Their equation one. All right. Oh my god. All right. The water mass balance. So we got water right here. No water right here. And water right here. So in equals out. All right. Remember. Remember. In the last video, I, I recapped that you got to multiply these. So that's why you multiply the mass fraction. And uh, oh, look. Water right here as well. Okay. There's water everywhere. It's evaporating. And that's our second equation. What else we got? It also says that strawberries and sugar are mixed in a 45 to 55 mass ratio. Okay. So pause it again. Think about what this means. Okay. This means that 45 out of 55, its ratio is equal to strawberries and sugar, right? 45 out of 55 is strawberries and sugar. I would do something like this or something weird. Okay. You can rearrange it. Okay, it's 45 times the mass of the sugar is equal to 55 times the mass of the strawberries. Not the other way around. Okay, think about what it, this is saying. Strawberries and sugar are mixed in a 45 to 55 mass ratio. This is the entire purpose of this class. It's converting the 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 the, the words, the problem statement, into a logical concrete equation, which we can now use to solve this mass balance. Okay. All right. The last thing is uh, calculate how many pounds of strawberries we need to make a pound of jam. So a little trick is we can convert this into setting up a, uh, a pound of jam. It's a, kind of like a given now. And now this is our mass balance. Okay. So the degrees of freedom, all we got to do is take how many equations and how many unknowns. How many unknowns? We got strawberries, sugar, and vapor. Now we know the jam. We got strawberries, sugar, and vapor. These are three unknowns. In the three equations, we can write the overall mass balance, the strawberry balance, and the ratio. All right? So the degrees of freedom is zero. You just subtract them. Okay? Which means that we can solve it. You want it to be zero. If it's not zero, that means you can't solve it. All right? What time is it? It's algebra time. All right. So if, if you got this far, then that's great. But I really encourage you, if you didn't get this far, pause the video. Try to draw it yourself. And try the algebra by yourself this time. Okay, I'm not going to baby through the entire algebraic set every single time, okay? So, we got three unknowns, system of equations. Try it again, George. Yes. Since we need to solve for the mass of the strawberries in the end, I'm going to start by rearranging the third equation, okay? And I can plug that in. So I want to solve for sugar. You might be tempted to solve for strawberries, but that's not really going to help you. Solve for sugar, plug it into equation one, and we have this equation. And use equation two. Plug it into here. I'm going to quickly go through the algebra. You can pause it and you can do it yourself. I really want you to do it yourself. Now, I'm a stickler for exact approximations, which I know is an oxymoron. Like I said, it's an approximation. It's an engineering approximation. It's not an exact solution. So at this point, I haven't really done any calculations and actually plugging in numerical values. So you can either plug in the values which personally I don't like to do because I get confused with the numbers and then I tend to make errors. So what I like to do is something a little more like this, which is really just solving the algebra in terms of the variables themselves. And you can check it out and we get a final answer. Or we can quickly go through the um, algebra and you can, you can do something more like this. So I'm just going to use x for the, the mass of the vapor and uh, do a little bit of plugging in. Okay. So if we plug this in, we get an equation like this. Distribute. And we have everything in terms of x. Plug in some numbers, something like this. And we have some more approximations. And we can solve for x will be 0 0.08 pounds, mass of the vapor. And uh, look, now we can replace this. 0 0.08 pounds is the mass of the vapor. Hey, look, we can plug it into some of the equations we already know. And we can plug into the mass of the strawberries, which is uh, equation uh, 2. 
All right, and we get a final answer of 0.49 uh, pounds. So whether you plug it in and do it this way, plug in the numbers, or leave everything in terms of the variables like this, it doesn't matter. You still get 0.49 pounds here and 0.49 pounds here. All right. Again, if this is too fast, I kind of did that intentionally because I, I really want you to do it yourself. Do your own method because I'm not going to be there for your exam. I'm not going to be there 10 years from now when you're working on your own processes in industry or whatever you're doing. All right. So a couple little tidbits. We typically have to solve for pretty much the entire uh, mass balance. They, they kind of work these questions. So you have to, you have to solve the entire thing. Um, but in this case, there's actually an easier way. Okay. Namely, we have two equations and two unknowns. We have the sugar and the solids. So if we write the sugar balance, we actually have another equation. Ooh, interesting. And uh, we have two equations, two unknowns, and we can simply solve this much smaller system of equations for uh, 49, 0.49 pounds. Again, the same exact answer. There's three ways of solving this question. All right, careful with a, a little bit of um, calculation. For me, I kept writing uh, 0 0.137 instead of 1.37, that's going to lead to some errors. Again, that's why I don't like converting the values. I just like the variables, right? Well, anyway, what I'm trying to show you is that this is much simpler than, you know, these long expressions. And sometimes you do have these long expressions and sometimes there's a clever way. But, you know, that's okay. Don't feel bad about doing the long way for now because we've learned the different methods and I wanted to show you all the ways of doing them. So that by the time you get to the exam, you pick up on these little tricks and little tidbits, and you can do it by yourself. Okay? Short bits, basically. That's part, that's part of engineering. Alright? A little more tidbits. Even though we didn't have enough species mass balance, they did tell us the strawberry jam ratio, so that eliminated one of the degrees of freedom. And additionally, they told us the terms that keep in terms of the ratio. So keep this in mind, because we're going to have this a lot in terms of a ratio per pound of substance. There's, that's going to happen a lot. So that's very useful for engineering. Because you don't really know, need to know exactly as long as you have a ratio. It could be per per pi pounds of jam, per 100 million pounds of jam. All right, we're going to be doing this later on. This is this is called a basis. It's going to do later. Sometimes it's easier to keep it in terms of variables, like I said. But in this case, it's probably just best to plug in the numbers. Just really be careful with the algebra, like I said, writing the 0.137 in terms of the 1.37. Now, a little tip that I told you, suppose that, suppose that you do mess up writing 0.137 instead of 1.37. That's going to lead to some errors in your calculations. You might get negative numbers. You might get um, extra mass. The mass balance is not going to work out. And you're frantically writing your equations because you've got 10 minutes left on the exam. If this is the case, I recommend you write out your thought process because whenever the grader looks at your exam, they're only, going to, they're only going to quickly skim your notes and your, your, your equations. So write something like this, like, you know, here's my mass balance. Here's some algebra. There's probably an algebraic mistake, but, uh, you know, I really have no time to go back, but I I'm really making sure I check the algebra. If it's probably something small like that. You know, I, I like to write little sentences like that. I really don't know if it makes a difference, but at least for myself, at least it's not about the grades, really. It's really for your self-understanding. Okay, I understood the mass balance. Sure, I messed up the algebra somewhere. But that doesn't really matter in the span of 50 minutes. The chances of you messing up small algebra like that, of course, is very high. So I think it's much more important to rack up points for the mass balance in the process diagram rather than small little algebraic mistakes. Okay? Uh, I have a couple of vlogs where I talk about this where, like, you know, yes, writing the little details is very important. But in, this, in the pressure of the exam, you're very likely to make those types of mistakes. So try not to make them. That's why practice makes perfect. Okay, That's the other workaround. If you just practice and practice and practice, you're less likely to make those types of mistakes. All right. So thanks for watching. That's all I got today. Uh... The playlist should be here. Check my website. Check out the links in the description. They should have, you know, uh, slides and leave any comments, please. All right. Thank you for watching. Have an